Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. I want to make a video specifically on Gemini 2.0 for a few reasons. First of all is that Gemini 2.0 is really good. So what you'll see is that it is a state-of-the-art model that can do a lot of things. It, can, it has a lot of capacities, especially if you're working when uh, you're building agents or AI workflows. It is really good and actually quite fast. Just to show you how good it is, let's go to chatbot arena here. So this, um, this table here will show you how human people have been evaluating models when pit against one against each other. So right now, the, the winner is by just a little bit Grok3 and GPT 4.5 right under. But if we go to number four, we have Gemini 2.0 Pro with a really good score of, of 1380. So for this model to be flying so under the radar and being so good is, is actually really surprising for another specific reason. So I ran the cost of the input and output tokens and Gemini 2.0 is 15 cents per million token and GPT 4.5 is $75. This is insane. The, the standard I think most developers are using for agents is Claude 3.7 and 3.5. And even comparing it to this, it's dirt cheap. And we're not even talking about GPT 4.5 just because it's not a model you should be using. It's too expensive. Building anything on it is simply going to load your card and bankrupt you. If you want to get a second mortgage on your house, be my guest, but Gemini 2.0 at this price is a steal. So I have put up for you a tutorial about the best capacities that you can use um, of Gemini 2.0, especially the pro variant. Just so you understand, there are, there are other variants. There is the um, thinking mode, which is similar to O1 or Cloud 3.7 thinking mode or, or R1. But there are also the flash model, which is a really, really fast version. But today we're going to be covering the pro version, which is the most well-rounded. It's quite fast. It has good capacities. So let's go a bit over um, our code editor here. And what we'll be doing, if I go to my package.json, is that I will be using this Google Generative AI um, NPM package here. This will allow us to create a really, really simple way to get started. So this is a simple API. So here, if you see, I can import it and then I just need to create an instance of it with my API key. There's are, there are a few other utils in this file, but they don't really matter. So let's have a look first at the at just regular prompting. So if I open this regular prompting file here, what you will see is that it's pretty simple. It does not follow the exact way of um, the OpenAI API, which has been a bit standard, but Claude is not doing the same. Google obviously is big enough that it doesn't care, so it's not following that standard. However, the usage is pretty simple. So let's go ahead and show what regular prompting looks like. So here, this is a pretty simple riddle. It's pretty classic, so it should be in the training data of the model, but we obviously need to start with just the basic things. So here, I will just get this running. So as this is happening in the background, we are hitting the Google API. This was quite fast. I didn't count all, uh, I didn't do a test, but if, if I'm looking at all these tokens, it took two seconds, so it's pretty, pretty fast. So as you can see, prompting, it's regular application, right? This is nothing to drive home about. I wanna focus on the rest. So let's go back into our editor, and one that you will be using if you're building agents and workflows is JSON mode, simply because JSON is the data format that makes the web go round. It's um, JavaScript object notation. All of the APIs in the world talk in JSON most of the time. There are exceptions, of course. So JSON mode essentially allows you to force a model to give you back JSON data. So what I've done here is that I've asked it to create a really specific, deeply nested um, JSON structure about a book, the author, the publisher, to see if it's working well. So let's go ahead and paste this in our editor. We'll clear the screen. The reason I asked it to go a little bit deeper is that JSON, you, you, the, the model needs to understand the structure. And I'm pleasantly surprised that all of this worked pretty well, was pretty quick. Um, so just understand that if you have a lot of data and you need to get a structured output out of it to push to your database, large language model like Gemini 2.0 are really good at it. And the context window um, is huge in Gemini. 
in Gemini. So you're able to put full websites, you're able to put full books, full scripts, full code bases, and get the structured JSON output of what you need in. That's a really, really useful tool if you're building agents. But let's explore a bit because it doesn't stop there. There's a lot of good stuff in there. The next one that I am really excited about is the code execution. Essentially, a lot of agents or large, large language models are limited by their training data. And sometimes predicting the next amount of text is, is not properly working. But what if you could give tools to these large language models to execute code? They could come up with a plan, write a code to validate if a math function works or to validate if their assumptions are right about uh, a data set, and they're able to execute that code. So let's go over and look at how this function is done. So code execution. So if you see here, I'm just saying that um, I have a principal of $1,000 getting 5% 5, uh, 5 annual interest compounded monthly over five years. So essentially, this is just a compounding interest math problem. A reasoning model would be able to do it, but it's, it's a bit expensive, it's slower. So this will allow the model to go ahead and generate code that it will execute on Google server. So you're also, you're safe on your own server. You're not actually executing that code and it will output the resulting um, logs or the, result, the, the results of that code into its response. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like here. It's gonna take a few seconds because the code actually needs to run on Google server. But when it, when it comes back, what is actually interesting is that you can see here that it generated a few variables. It, it uh, generated the principal, the interest rate. It calculated the function to get the final result. And it's actually logging you in the response with a lot of, of certainty that this is actually um, the answer to your question. So it's not just guessing to the best of its training ability, it's actually executing code and verifying it for you. So this is super useful, especially if you need an agent to be a bit more autonomous than just do step A, expecting result B. This allows the, the agent you're building and their workflows you're building with large language models to be more precise and, and have a brain of their own as they're working with code that they can execute on their own. But let's take a look at the other ones. Um, it comes with vision mode, which is pretty cool on its own that a single model does all of these things. So here I just have an image of my channel and um, vision mode is pretty much what you'd expect, right? You send it an image and you try to ask it what it's seeing. So here, um, nothing to rhyme home about, but I really, really appreciate the level of details that the image response is giving here. So let's wait a little bit on it and see what it comes back with. What is pretty interesting is that it's able to extract really good amount of structured um, details about the image. As you see, it even found the nearly 2,000 subs. By the way, please sub. I'm really, really close to 2,000 and I appreciate it. But it also has all of the text. It's, it's really good at vision. So I would, I would recommend that you use it. It's pretty cheap also. And a pretty fun last feature we're going to get over is um, the safety settings. So here, I'm not going to read all of this. But I'm asking it something a, a bit gnarly. I'm asking it to write a, a story about Donald Trump and Elon Musk doing something that um, YouTube sensors won't allow me to say on camera. But as you can imagine, if you're building a large language model, you don't want your app to be used by people, you know, like deep at night <laughs> doing stuff. So safety features are useful if you want to build a safe application with large language model. So let's run it and see what it looks like. This one is actually pretty quick because we're not generating a whole lot of things here. So let's just give it a second. And as you see, it just answers me um, the borrowing thing that is it is an armless assistant that cannot create explicit content. Um, so yeah, that's really it. There you have it. There's also um, speech capacities and, um, and sound analysis. I'm not gonna go over those because I feel like talking agents and talking LLMs is a whole other realm for development. It requires a whole different approach. But there you have it. At a really cheap, cheap cost, if we go back here, of 15 cents per million input token and 60 cents per million output token, you have a model that is able to do regular prompts, JSON mode, execute code on, on Google server, analyze images, and, and 
focus on safe responses. So you have it. This is a really powerful model. Don't sleep on it. It's one package away. You just have to get your API key on Google. I'll link, um, I'll link those in the description. And please subscribe to the channel. Give a like and a comment. It really helps. And see you in the next one.